Hi everybody, we will start our route from the largest plaza of Naples, the magnificent Piazza Plebiscito. Here, the proof of historical events are everywhere. The name itself refers to the plebiscite or vote in 1861 when Naples chose to join Italy. Before that time, the city suffered through many foreign rulers. Each of them wanted to celebrate his own dynasty, so this area of 25,000 square meters takes you back to the French period with the Angel family or to the Bourbon time. He is represented, for example, by looking at two Greek equestrian statues in the middle of the square. One of them reproduces charts of a Bourbon made by Antonio Canola and the second one Ferdinand I. There is a story about these statues. If you try to close your eyes, you can get to pass between the statues despite their huge distance. Today, a lot of events take place in Piazza Plebiscito and here Neapolitan people welcome the new year with the concert and shows. The west part of the square is dominated by the Church of San Francisco di Paola, who was built by Pietro Bianchi for the will of Ferdinand of Bourbon as ex voto for the reconquest of the reign, as we can see at the epigraph on the facade. Its design was inspired by Pantheon San Pietro in Rome, Inside, you can admire the paintings by some of the most important Italian artists of that period, statues resembling scenes, and the main altar decorated with precious stones. On the east side of Piazza Plebiscito, there is the 17th century King of Spain residence, the Royal Palace. Here, you will find the historical living quarters museum with the 30 rooms on one floor, and the National Library, which preserves more than a million and a half of volumes and the famous papyrus of Herculaneum. Luigi Mabitelli worked on the facade and created niches that were filled by Umberto I, King of Italy, with eight statues of Neapolitan kings, from Ruggero the Norman to Vittorio Emanuele II. According to Neapolitan people and their sense of humor, if you start to see from the first one on the left side of the palace, paying attention to their posing, the statues seem to say, Who pissed just right there? Me not. I was the guilty. Let cut his penis. The honoring was the main reason also for the San Carlo Theatre construction. It was commissioned by Carlo VII of Bourbon, who wanted to endow Naples with a new and larger theatre and to remark its status as great European capital. Our theatre is the still active oldest opera house in Europe and one of the most capacious theatres of the peninsula. It can accommodate more than 2,000 spectators. After the fire in 1816, the San Carlo was promptly rebuilt with the blue and gold that were the official colours of the Bourbons. In front of the Royal Palace there is Gambrinus, an ancient bar where you can have a coffee imagining to be surrounded with the intellectuals and journalists that met and sipped there during Naples' 19th century AD. Leaving Piazza Plebiscito in front of the sea sends out another royal residence more ancient than the Royal Palace. Its name is Castelnuovo. The impressive fortress was begun in, in 1279 by Charles I of Anjou but subsequently modified by the Aragonese. We find stories, legends and facts in this place too. The Triumph Park, for example, was erected in memory of Alfonso Victorius' entrance in the city. Benedetto Croce instead writes, One day it had an unexpected and horrible sight at Castelnuovo, well known as Maschianzuino. There was a monster, a crocodile, that was setting out of the sea throughout a hidden hole in the castle moat was used as executor of justice. Prisoners sentenced to death were sent down to the moors and were regularly swallowed by the crocodile. Castelnuovo dominates the center of Piazza Municipio that is located at the end of Via Medina and is the seat of a municipal town. Not far from Piazza Municipio lies Via Toledo, an ancient street of Naples. Over the centuries, this road had become famous for the travel of the Grand Tour and for some quotes in Neapolitan songs. Now is one of the most important shopping areas. At the beginning of Via Toledo start the Spanish Quarter. They are mostly known for Bassi, that is cramped and dark rooms at the ground level where large families live and where people hang out, the laundry on a straight wire that goes from one building to another. Here there are lots of typical places. The most famous is Nenilla, 
where you can eat our traditional dishes in a noisy and funny atmosphere. So let's join this trip with us.